is the greatest blessing from God. Will you agree that apart from the gifts of salvation, receiving Jesus as our Lord and being saved from eternal destruction, the greatest blessing we can receive is health? You can have a wonderful family, but if you are flat on your back and cannot enjoy being with them, that will be misery. As for money, you might be able to afford the latest medical treatments or best surgeons. But all the money in the world cannot buy health. I have no doubt God wants you and me to enjoy his blessing of health. When Jesus walked on earth, he didn't walk on water or calm storms all the time. But he healed all the time. Every village he stepped into, everywhere he went, he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed. See Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Brethren, we have been robbed. One of the reasons I'm so passionate about teaching on the Holy Communion is that I was a victim. I had a legalistic teaching that kept me in fear and bondage for many years when I was a young Christian. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you listening to me now were taught the same things. I was taught to examine myself before coming to the Lord's table and warn not to partake of the Holy Communion if there was sin in my life that made me unworthy. I was told that if I did, I would bring judgment on myself. I would become weak and sickly, and I might even die before my time. As a result, I was so fearful of the communion, I never partook of it. You see, I was robbed of my inheritance because of well-meaning but erroneous preaching that put an invisible fence around something that was meant to be a source of health and healing and blessing for God's people like you and I. A fence was put around it saying, don't come near unless you are worthy. I don't want you to be robbed like I was. And that is why I want you to see for yourself that the word of God and to see what the word of God says about the Holy Communion. Are you ready? Yes. How did such wrong beliefs come about? They stem from a misinterpretation, misinterpretation of the Apostle Paul's teaching on the Holy Communion in his letter to the Corinthian church. Corinthian church. Therefore, whoever, that is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 to 30. Therefore, listen carefully. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment, judgment to himself, not discerning the lost body. For this reason, many, for this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. But somehow, people have misunderstood verses 27 and 29 of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and have thought that we cannot partake of the communion if we are unworthy because of our sins. But Jesus' blood has already been shed for us. And as believers, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. See 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. 
We are completely righteous and worthy, not because we are perfect, but because he, Jesus, is perfect. Now, I want you to make it, I want to make it clear that I'm not against sin or I'm not advocating for sin. By what we don't have to be perfect to come to the Lord's table. If that were a prerequisite, no one would be able to partake. You might not think you have committed any serious or major sins, but to God, sin is sin. And if you fail in even one area, you are counted guilty of all. James 2.10 but thank God that even when we fail, brethren, as you prepare yourselves to partake in the Lord's Supper, I want to encourage you that there is indeed power in the act of eating. If I take you back into the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve disobeyed God by their act of eating, God, in his own divine love, has ordained or instituted another channel for us to receive or restore back to us all that we lost in the first Adam. And this is the Lord's Supper. God is reverting all the diseases, sicknesses, Premature death, pains, griefs, shame, name them all, that we lost or we forfeited in the first Adam, we are blessed as believers in Christ to be restored back. All that we forfeited in the first Adam through Jesus Christ, the second Adam. So get prepared. Thanksgiving, uh, Eucharist or the Lord's Supper is all about thanksgiving. Giving thanks to God for his love that he showered and constantly show us through Christ our Lord Jesus. Therefore, get your elements ready. When I mean, when I say elements, I mean your piece of bread, your piece of biscuits and the fruit juice and if you do have the communion wine you are blessed so get them ready as we partake in the lord's supper dearly beloved in the lord in the night that jesus was betrayed he took bread and after he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said this is my body broken for you. Take it. Amen. Beloved, before you ingest this body, perceive it or see it as the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ for you at the cross. That all the fiery judgments, the punishments, that you deserve in your body because of your sin god sent his son jesus christ and at the cross jesus allowed his body to be broken for your healing and for your wholeness and by his stripes you are healed And by perceiving this piece of bread or broken body, by perceiving this piece of bread or piece of biscuit in your hand, that it's the true representation of our Lord Jesus Christ's body, then you are designing the Lord's body worthily. And that justifies you to be a partaker. So thank God for his act of love which he demonstrates or demonstrated for us at the cross by his son jesus christ amen partake
Dearly beloved in the Lord, in the same vein, Jesus took the cup after the broken bread. And after he has given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is the cup of my blood in the new covenant, which was shed for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you can in the remembrance of me. Amen. Brethren, I uh, earlier on mentioned that there is power in the act of eating. Again, if I refer you back to the night of the Passover, it was the blood of an animal that the Israelites put at their lentil and their doorposts. And, and the Lord said to them that when he sees the blood, he will pass over them. Remember, that is the power of the blood of an animal. How much more you blessed to be covered by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is how blessed you are. And again, so in the Old Testament, annually the priests atone for the sin of the nation of Israel once a year by sacrificing animals and sprinkle, sprinkling of the blood of that animal on the altar or on the Ark of the Covenant. Today, your sins are not washed by the blood of an animal, by the blood of a bull or goat, but by the cleansing and redeeming blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if the blood of an, an, an animal can cover the sin of a whole nation for a whole year, how long can the blood, the redeeming blood and the cleansing blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, cover your sins? For this is how we belittle the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of a bull could cover the sin of a whole nation for a whole year. And we believers doubt if our sins in our entire lives are covered by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here to encourage you that yes, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for the remission of our sins at the cross has completely removed our sins in our entire lives. That is the purpose of God sending his son to earth to save us from our sins. And that is the reason why Jesus' blood was shed. Remember, his blood wasn't shed to stop you from sinning, but it's rather it was rather shed to bear, to it rather shed to cancel the condemnation the judgment that awaits you at his second coming. So if you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, if you are a believer, if you are born again, your sins are all covered. Your sins are removed entirely. So trust in the power of the blood and plead it constantly upon yourself and upon your household and even upon your possessions. Amen. Drink from the cup. Brothers and sisters, remain blessed always. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we have by the shedding of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ's blood for us lead us on, super saturate us in all our ways and cover us and our loved ones wherever we go, now and always. Amen. Remain blessed and don't go away. Listen to the teaching on the Holy Communion. Bye-bye.